This bike check is a very special one. It belongs to Sam Hill and it's his brand new Nuke Proof Mega 290C. Although, as you can probably tell, a bit different to the rest of them, it's in Ferrari red. Let's take a closer look. So as with all bike checks, let's go to the heart of the bike first. That is the frame. So this is a size medium 2020 model version of the Nukeproof Mega 290C. So that's a carbon front triangle that is brand new, mated to an aluminium rear end. This is a frame basically that Sam Hill has been racing for most of this year. And now the geometry is slightly refined compared to the models that we have here at GMBN and GMBN Tech. And it's also got revised suspension kinematics too. So let's take a look at that first. At the heart, you've got this massive rock shock shock. I say massive because on the previous iteration of the Mega 290, which was an aluminium bike, it had a 210 by 55 mil shock on there. It's now running a 230 by 62 and a half. Although on Sam's personal race bike, I've noticed it's actually a 65 millimeters on here. So they're just eking out a teeny bit more travel from the back end. Rear wheel travel on the 2020 model is up 10 millimeters to 160 millimeters. And geometry on this is slightly different again as well from the 2019 model. And also Sam is running a 180 mil travel fork up front. Our stock, it does come with a 170, although the RS model comes with a 180, giving it a 64 degree head angle. So it's a very aggressive bike, 160, 180, big wheels on here. This thing is a monster truck. And as we're seeing, it's obviously working for him very well because he's now a triple EWS world overall champion. So a hell of a bike by all accounts. So new is the carbon front end. We've seen this previously on the 275, but this is at last the 290. And the color is just, it's breathtaking in the flesh. I can't tell you how nice this finish is in Ferrari red. Adorns is number 13 on the top tube here, which some might say that's an unlucky number. Well. Not in Sam's case, but it's clearly pretty unlucky to most of the other EWS races because uh, he's been doing it right on this bad boy. Now the seat angle is also steeper on these revised Mega 290s. It's now 76.3, so much better for those climbing stages. Very important enduro to make sure you can get to the next stage and preserve your energy for the attack on the descending stages. Also, the mounting position of the swing link is very slightly different. On the alloy version, whereas the top tube comes down at a slightly different angle and it has a seat mast, it's a bit more incorporated with the carbon design. There was actually a plate welded on the underneath of this sort of seat tower area on the alloy frame that this upper pivot was part of. But of course, with the carbon design, it's much cleaner looking. Very, very good looking bike, this. Out back, it's the same respect with chainstays. So they're 450 mil chainstays, and this being a size medium, has a 450 mil reach now. So previously Sam was running the size medium, the stock one, which was slightly shorter, but now they've improved that to suit really what the intentions of this amazing looking bike is for, out and out EWS racing. Also, just a couple of little touches. I've noticed he's got some black Gorilla tape here on the frame, put here by his mechanic, JC. Um, that clearly is just to protect that beautiful paintwork from when it has tubes and stuff strapped in here for race situations. And a nice little detail on the back here, underneath the other number 13, is a little Yosemite Sam cartoon character. Nice. Now up to the business end, the cockpit of the bike. Uh, first up, you're gonna notice the hand guards on there they're bold red to match in with the colorway of the bike. Uh, they're not everyone's cup of tea, but undoubtedly Sam Hill has made them work and they clearly do work for him. Uh, they're customized versions of the AMS. Um, basically they've got red, red panels on the front here with his graphics on number 13, looking quite good. Now the bars are the Sam Hill edition nuke proof bars, 20 mil rise, and he's got these at 760 mil wide. Stem is a 50 mil nuke proof horizon, pretty much standard for Sam. And on the top of the stem, he's got one of the one-up components Garmin mounts. That is super clean, puts the Garmin a little bit further ahead so you can't hit it with his knee when he's racing. And it also provides access to the tool that's inside the steerer tube here. So pretty much a necessity for an enduro race to be able to fix a puncture or any sort of damage from a crash on the go as fast as possible. Again, you'll have his inner tube or maybe a CO2 cartridge, stuff like that, mounted low on the bike. And you've got your, your Allen keys, chain tool, 
or any of the other essentials stashed in the head tube here. So basically it's super easy to get it out with or without gloves, always at hand for those sort of little adjustments needs to make on the trail. Uh, he's got the Code RSC brakes here by SRAM on the top and he's got a really cool number plate feature. So he's got these customized cable ties that have actually got mounts, real clean way of doing this. So we've seen this before in his bike, very trick looking. One other little detail that you won't be able to see is how soft his handlebar grips are. So these are insanely soft. I've not felt grips this soft. And if I get my little Shore durometer tester on them, they're coming in at about 10A. So that is extremely soft. If you consider that some downhill tires around 40A, just like the front tire here, you can literally, they're really malleable. So having a grip like this sort of softness means they're great in all weather conditions. So if it's very muddy or very wet, it's gonna retain grip, but also they've got a nice damping characteristic to them. However, they're not gonna last though. So it's not really a consumer item to have something like that and expect it to be durable. They are race condition only. Now underneath the bars, when it comes to shifters, Sam is running the SRAM access system. So he's got a very neat looking shifter mounted on the underneath. The cool thing about this is actually cut away. They've taken some material off it to customize the shape of the paddles there to make sure it really suits the way he wants to ride. Uh, the paddles are quite big, but as you can see, that trimmed away portion looks really cool. And again, it's got the dropper post version on the left-hand side of his bars. Okay, so up to the front end of the bike here, and you can clearly see the racing red RockShox Lyric. This is the 180 mil with the best damper, and it's got a charger with the twin adjustable compression. It's got adjustable rebound on there. Again, running 180 mil travel. And again, looking at the caliper, so the codes, he's running 200 mil rotors. So that's pretty much standard for the racers these days. And he's got Mavic D-Max Pro wheels. But a really cool thing about these ones is they have the Day of the Dead graphics around them. Remember one of his Day of the Dead bikes, one of his previous bikes, super cool, carrying that through onto this bike. As far as tires go, Sam is running Michelin tires. So this is the brand new DH22. It's a downhill casing tire. It's immensely strong, super soft rubber. In fact, these coming in, again, I think these are about 40A on here. We we'll just double check that on the durometer rating thing here. Yeah, so you get about 40A. Uh, that's obviously going to depend on conditions. In warmer conditions, you can actually get softer measuring out of these. Uh, naturally, he's running them tubeless and he's got the Nuproof Ard system on the inside. So that's their Ard inserts just to give a little extra protection. You've got to think that Endura Racing, part of it is continuing the race. You've got to finish the race under all situations. So the weight really doesn't matter when you're Sam Hill. It's all about smashing down those hills as fast as possible. And out back, things are a little bit different. Uh, again, he's running a 29 inch wheel. There's no mullet version of this bike currently for Sam. 200 mil rotor, the code calipers there again. Uh, he's actually running sintered pads front and rear, but I'd imagine that would change here and there due to preferences and conditions. Again, the D-Max Pro wheels, as you can see on here, again, set up tubeless with that Nuke-proof Ard system. Rear tire does switch for different races, usually running those DH22s as we've seen on the front. Here you can see he's actually got the Wild here, so this is the Wild Enduro rear tire. The slightly firmer in compound, I'm actually getting these coming in at about 44 at the moment, but um, again, it does depend on conditions when you actually measure these things. As far as transmission and stuff goes, it is of course running SRAM 12 speed on here, the access system. The rear derailleur has clearly been clouted on several rocks, so just goes to show the durability is up there. A little custom hack I can see is there's some Gorilla tape over the top of the battery. I'd imagine that is for security, just in case he smashes it hard enough that he can accidentally lose the battery in a race situation. Of course, that's not something that anyone normal will be concerned with. We're talking about Sam Hill here. So it's got the 1050 cassette on the rear. It's got that amazing sort of rainbow effect on it. Uh, it looks so cool. And then up front, he's running a 170 millimeter crank. We've seen 165s on his bikes previously, but obviously getting a little bit more horsepower out of this with those bigger wheels. So the 170 crank with a 30 tooth Eagle chain ring on the front and an MRP chain guide. You might also notice the pedals are a little bit different. Sam is quite famous for having some customized versions of those Nuke Proof Horizon pedals. And these actually sell them a V2 prototype, Sam Hill. So it goes to show that what Sam is actually doing to his own bikes will see production at some point. And they've got monstrously large pins on those. And I can also see titanium axles as well. Nice. Bearings all round on the Nuke Proof Mega 290 are now branded Enduro bearings. Very tough, very durable. 
And as for finishing touches, again, emphasizing that Ferrari red finish on Sam's bike. Uh, it looks absolutely amazing. I, personally, I think this is the fastest looking and the best looking version of a race bike that he's had. Uh, the saddle on here, a little bit different to usual. He's not running a Nupru saddle. He's very specific with his saddle. He's actually got a specialized saddle on here and it's one of these power control ones. It's very, very short and stumpy. A bit more of a perch, but it clearly works for Sam. That is perched on the top of an access equipped dropper post. Of course, it's the Reverb Stealth. This one's running 170 mil drop on there. And it's got a nuke proof collar on the top there too. And overall weight of his race bike, bearing in mind it has got downhill casing tires, inserts, downhill wheels. Uh, Sam is five foot eight and he weighs around 75 kilos at race weight. This is coming in at about, if you give us two seconds here, um, 15.8 kilos or 34 pounds. I think it's a pretty amazing looking bike. Um, like I said, I think it's probably the best one he's had yet. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you want to see a couple more new proof related things, click down here to see that Day of the Dead bike that Sam had previously, which is pretty nice to be fair. And click down here if you want to see all about that brand new trail bike for new proof, the Reactor. As always, don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up here at GMBN Tech. Uh, click subscribe and click that notification bell. And every time one of these videos goes live, you'll get a notification on your device. Cheers guys.